And we're live from a room next to my bathroom in my basement. This is My Worst Holiday, a podcast about your worst wedding, bachelor party, bachelorette party, or whether it's funny after the fact. We want to fucking hear it. So <laughs> today we have a very special guest, Mr. Ron Blair. Hey. Ron, say hello. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. It's a hoot. It's a hoot. It's a hoot and Annie. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't use hoot and Annie anymore, or or shindig for that matter. I uh, use I'm, I'm I use hoot and Annie fortnightly. I'm, a, I'm a sure I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a, a hoot and a, 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 what did I just say? Goddamn it, hoot and Annie and a shindigger. I'm a I'm a shindigger. That's what I am. That's hoot and Annies and shindigs and goings ons and and whatnots and. <laughs> Tom Foolery's. You know, I, you know, as a kid, we used to go square dancing and stuff. So, you know, I, I, I was kind of a, a shindigger, you know, like an Alabama left or the old left hand. And I, I used to do that like as a child. I, I'm t- when I was nine, boy, I could get it. Is that right? I was a dancing fool. <laughs> we had, uh, we had, uh, we, we did it in high school. You know, you had the, the section of, of gym class that was square dancing. We never did that in high school. That's kind of like, Oh, I wish we had. They were always fun. like, you might want to shower. Now let's play wiffle ball. And I'm like, I'm not showering, but I'll play ball. <laughs> I'm not showering with these people. I'm in high I never school. did I'm either. Kidding. I never did either. I hated it. I'm like, Are I'm not showering. Me? This fucking place is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ah. And somehow, somehow, I still got fucking athlete's foot. I still... Ex- I still want that insane. to make less fucking sense than that. I, I don't know. Oh, Aaron Hawkins is watching because we're going to be doing shout outs and stuff like that. Aaron Hawkins, he's a he's a writer. He's a director as well. He has a, a movie on Tubi called um, Evil Lurks. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome to the show. We're talking to Ron Blair. Ron Blair is a writer, director, uh, actor. Um, he, has a, uh, he has a short film out that I just watched. It was fantastic called Ciao Bella. And it was it was wonderful. Is it is it just out on YouTube right now, or is it is uh, it been completely released? I know you sent it to me, but hello. Well, we have Chow Bella is the one I sent you. That was TFP's first production. That one isn't out yet because um, not all of the songs are for public use. Oh, I use public okay. I'm like I'm like. Like watching Most a girl do interpretive of dance and losing her virginity by Ravel, I thought that was but fun. You know, <laughs> not, not the performance right. So you, you keep cutting in and out. Like as soon as I, I know it's doing it to me too. God damn it! And everything was rolling so good too, and that was a that was a great joke about Ravel. Uh, come on. <laughs> It was great. I was thinking and talking and everything. <laughs> right? Oh, the uh, you know, it's funny though, when we got to the editing of that movie, he was like, uh, what do you what do you think of for music? I was like, Dance of the Seven Veil. She has dance, dance yeah. of the seven veil. Like when we were filming, I said, it has to be this. And then and, and now we finally found someone to orchestrate it. So it is being worked on for public consumption right okay. now, Chell right. Bella is. Well, I, uh, I, for I those certainly who don't know. Chow Bella is is now. Go ahead. You, you keep you keep cutting out, buddy. Do I really? Ah, yeah. I'm going to move know. this as if it helps. Okay, yeah, we're, we're helpless hit, hit here. The, hit the hit the side of. I was in electronics for 18 years, yeah. and I know one thing: uh, electronics work better when you when you when you slap them. You know, so uh, you like your wife. You know, basically like your wife. You know? Yeah, I I would because she would she would beat me. She's stronger than I am. <laughs> I live in fear, but that's okay. No, oh, my wife's my wife's funnier than I am. She's fantastic. I would never <laughs> ever lay a hand on my wife. Uh, she's she she could probably kick my ass too. I, I watched her punch right. a lesbian once, and and she cried really hard. And so. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm not sure I'm as tough as that lesbian. Um, so, you know. <laughs> so, Chow Bella, are you get? Are, am I coming in okay now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Chow Bella is the story of a young girl who wants to be a film. A st- she wants to to make movies, and um, 
you know, she's working class. I hope that came across. It's kind of, there's a classist kind of mm -hmm. thing. And it's about living in your own fantasy. Uh, her fantasies have to do with uh, Italian films, Fellini specifically. Yes. And it's just about her little journey. And that's Ciao Bella. It should be coming out sometime this year. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. It was about a half hour long, maybe a little bit longer, but it was uh, it, it was like like I said, an interpretive dance uh, to a girl, uh, uh, like a girl doing an interpretive dance to her losing her virginity was uh, was hilarious. I, well, not hilarious, but it's well done, and I thought yeah. it was very. Uh, I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, there, I, I thought that that had to be in there. We cast uh, Cat Lewis, who is a, a tremendous dancer, uh, a wonderful performer. And um, and yeah, so when we your, got on set, both we your played leads, that music. Yeah, both your lead actresses were, were fantastic. I can't wait mm -hmm. for it to get released, and and definitely let me know when it when it is released, uh, so I can I can put it out there to everybody because it, it was fantastic. Everybody, we're talking to Ron Blair. Uh, what's your production company? It's uh, TF TFP Films. TFP Films. Uh, he, he's a writer. He's a director. He's an actor and. And Ciao Bella, I can't wait for it to come up. I haven't seen any, I haven't watched anything else that you've made yet because you just sent me that one. Yeah. Um, we, did, uh, we did Truth afterwards. Truth is uh, streaming on Mosaic TV right now. Okay. On Mosaic uh, TV. If you have a Roku device, if you have an Android device, if you have an Apple TV or an Apple Fire Stick, download Mosaic TV and see. Us. See us, baby. Watch us. TV. So. Look at us. Once this is over, click over to Truth. It's a 40 minute short film. Okay. And, uh, you know, have fun with it. It's a hoot. Uh, it's a direct departure from Chow Bella. Okay. Uh, because I I had worked in the horror genre for many years and I, it's, I enjoy it. It's my wheelhouse. So Chow Bella was kind of anathema to what I normally do. Right. Uh, and so with Truth, I was like, you know what? I, I want to make another spooky movie. Not horror. I don't know if it's horror. It's spooky. What I, what it's I creepy like, Ron, and it's is, funny. Uh, is, is that you didn't do, um, you didn't do uh, horror. You know, like usually everybody does a short film. It's a, it's a short horror film. Right. I, I like, I like that. It was like, it was, it was a nice fresh, it was a, it was a fresh breath of air is what it was. Uh, oh, oh, right now, Mosaic yeah. TV, you can watch it for free at Mosaic T, uh, watch mosaic tv.com so you can watch right now for free at watch mosaic tv.com download it on on uh Roku on uh Android devices on and on the Amazon Fire Stick sorry Tori just popped up and said that so I didn't want to interrupt you but back, and I'll back to you I, Ron <laughs> I would pay a buck 75 to watch this show there you go and it's free right and, now and and, 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 you're and you're that fuckers if you like some play, something, give them money. Like, like give my money. holiday at patreon.com. Give me a dollar, you cheap fuckers. So, yeah, come on. Come it's on. a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so we followed up Chow Bella with Truth, which is a story about a local medium woman. That's her reputation locally. <laughs> about a local uh, liar. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, Maybe. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe all of the characters are liars. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I like that idea. Right? So uh, she is on a television program where two famed ghost hunters get wind of who this person is and the location that she's connected to. And they have her and her son show them around the house. And then slowly truths begin to become revealed. And uh, the shit hits the fan. <laughs> to put it not, not an eloquent way to put it, but shit hits the fan. I like it when shit hits the fan or fit hits the shan as uh uh god damn it. Christian Slater would say the fit it's hits the hoot. shan. It's a truth came out so much fun. It came out so great, and uh we used a lot of the same crew, a lot of the same cast. A lot of the same crew ended up being part of the cast and vice versa. Yeah, um, so you you use a lot of the same actors and stuff like that. That uh... I mean, we have a really talented base of uh, of uh, actors in this community to to pull from. So we're really fortunate that we have these folks. 
uh, you know, that we can approach. And I, it's like a revolving door. I love working with so many different people. And yeah, a lot of them are involved in one way or another in each of our projects. Okay. So you can see Truth on Mosaic, which is free right now at uh, watchmosaictv.com. Um, and are, are you on any other platform other than like maybe uh, YouTube or anything like that? Or Truth is not on YouTube, but the third short film we did, which is only 10 minutes as opposed to the two that we did that are 38 minutes, is could, if you look up could or uh, TFP films could, um, that should pop up. That's a lovely, again, it's a departure from horror in every way. Uh, it's a departure from Chow Bell. We just wanted to show that we are versatile filmmakers, yeah. you know, that we can cross several genres. And this one is a lovely little hard I'm not big on diversity, film. Ron. I like to be pigeonholed in the same thing. You know, I, I, <laughs> your diversity to yourself. <laughs> well, it's out there. It's on YouTube. My diversity is on YouTube. You can check that one out for free, too. It's amazing. It's like a gift. All right. We just keep on giving. Just keep on giving. All right, buddy. Well, hey, hit us with a, hit us with a funny or embarrassing life story. What do you got? Okay, I got a, a couple things here. The first one has to do, I don't know if these are so much embarrassing, but I got a kick out of these things happening. So a few months ago, around September, uh, my friend Daniel Emery Taylor, he was one of the, he was the kid star in Return of Swamp Thing. I got to know him at conventions and just, he was my buddy. And last year we're going uh, to Universal Studios and I wanted to go through Birmingham because fuck Atlanta, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck Atlanta. Oh that's why. You try oh. going around there and fucking rush hour. Fuck that town, man. Fuck I've been Atlanta. going there. I've buddy been going to Florida Anderson for so long and it we wasn't until last year. We went to Atlanta when we were like 17. That yeah. sucked. Oh. oh, it's awful. Yep. It's terrible. Uh, and M. Renoir is watching too. All right. We go to Florida all the time. And then we I just thought last year uh, or found out that Birmingham is only an hour out of the way. And I was like, I'd rather drive through Birmingham an hour out of my way than sit in traffic in Atlanta for an hour. God, it, awful. it was a great drive down. But I hit my friend up. I said, we're going to be hitting uh, Birmingham in the morning. What's a good breakfast place? And he told me the name of a place. And he said, by the way. Uh, the guy was it, I had a, was it was it called Eggs in Birmingham? No, that's good. Oh, okay, though. we should open that up. <laughs> I'm just saying the that's name the right breakfast. fucking there. All I, you got to do is think. I can't remember the place, but I ordered the heaviest breakfast I could, and then I yeah. took a bite of someone who was eating like oatmeal and fruit, and it was far superior to what I had just eaten. <laughs> so let that be oh, a lesson, a kids. A platter. Oatmeal is better. Oatmeal is better. Anyway, he said, he said, yeah, I'd go to this place. By the way, I had an actor drop out. Would you be interested in working on a film called Foxglove Candy? And I said, well, fuck yeah, I'd be interested in working on Foxglove Candy. Right. So I went down there. I like all those words. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. good fun. This is base, This is like a, a throwback to a Faster Pussycat Kill Kill and Switchblade Sisters. Just fun exploitation flicks of the day. Yeah, nice. And so uh, I got down there. Now, I just turned 50 last year. And for my entire yeah, stage and film career, I've done my own stuff. They're so cute at that age. Huh? I said they're so cute at that age. All right. We're adorable. <laughs> we're babies. So it came time for me to do a stunt. And... Uh, there was a crash pad. And I said, great, there's a crash pad. And they said, you know, take uh, take your fall real slow. And I was like, nah, I'm only 50. I can do <laughs> I'm <it."> only 50. <laughs> Holy shit. I wanted to show, you know, I'm fat. I'm 50 years old. I can still take a fall. I can take a punch. I can take, you know, whatever. Uh, grapple with me. I'm we'll type 2 diabetic. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how about I just eat shit on the pavement? And they were like, if you can. And I said, I can do it. I can do it. And so I did three takes fueled with adrenaline. Boom, boom, boom. Third time I got it right. It was glorious. And I went upstairs to smoke a cigarette and I talked to one of my co-stars. And then as the adrenaline was wearing off, I leaned over to her and said, 
don't tell anyone, but my knees are fucked to all hell. Like, <laughs> this is what happens when you do your own stunts over 50. Right. You can do them, sure, but you're going to pay for it. It was worth it. A, the shot is beautiful. A, it was worth it. I used to do a crocodile hunter bit on stage, and uh, I, I would jump. It would be my closer, and I would, I would like, I'd like do like I was tackling somebody. I'd actually tackle the microphone stand. <laughs> and like, yeah. And That's beautiful. That's I, 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 it. It was a great closer, and I did the bit doing the tackling thing once. <laughs> oh, how old were you when you did that? Oh, I was forty-five, I think. I, I like, yeah. I was like, ah, you know, like I'm like, I, like I did the bit, you know, and I'm like, I'm Mark Williams. Good night, and like, I'm like. Oh, God. I, I go I, up to the bar. Uh, I was doing, that was about the same age that I was when I said, okay, I can't do these falls. I can't do this anymore. Right. Uh, despite being on film, fought, you know, five years later and, and eating shit on the pavement. But um, I was doing a play, uh, 39 Steps, a play version. Great show. Yeah. And one night at rehearsals, the director said, hey, can you run in and fall and then get right back up? And I was like, you bet your Fucking sweet right ass I can. I can. Sure I can. <laughs> so after doing it a few times, he said, do you need knee pads? And I said, you bet your ass I need knee pads. <laughs> sure this do. Is me. Yeah. So for the production, we got knee pads. I would run in. It was great. The My knees were okay. Until opening night and from opening night and every show past that, the right knee pad would slide right past my calf oh, as no. I was heading to the hard concrete. So my oh. knee for seven performances would just crunch against the pavement and I couldn't just lay there. I had to get up immediately after. Right. It was beautiful. And then I said, I'm done falling. I'm not going to fall anymore. Yeah. Which was so a lie. The, the, the last uh, major trick I did was uh me and my brother went to uh do you know do you guys have Benny's down there? Denny's you know Benny's or Benny's? Benny's with a B. No, I've not -I -N -N -Y. Heard now Benny's is this huge liquor store. Oh. I mean it's like the Taj Mahal of liquor and cigars. You just right. go in there mm -hmm. and you, you you start singing like Julie Andrews as you spin in a circle. Oh right. you know like it's, 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 I'm yeah. I'm home you know like right you know, we pull it, and this is uh, this is like eight months ago, somewhere around there. But uh, anyway, I I I, I open the door, and my brother's truck's a little bit higher, and I and I just hop down. And when I hop down, I heard my knee go. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I went ah, like like that. And uh, I told everybody I was doing like one of those tumbling things, you know, like the half barrels and a spin or whatever. Right. I, 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 yeah, I jumped out. I just hopped out. I, I wasn't even jumping. I'd like kind of slid down and and hopped out. And I, yeah. So I'm in there like dragging my fucking leg behind me in, in Benny's. Like I've already been drinking for like fucking four hours. Like I just watched the right. like, oh, scotch. Yeah. The first time I walked into a liquor barn. And I'm not a big drinker, but I enjoy, you know, some some nice alcohol. Uh, the first time I walked into a liquor barn, I was astounded by the olive bar. Of all oh. the booze they had, it was the olive bar that I thought, oh, I'm, I'm home. <laughs> I'm I can home. eat all this. Like, I didn't even know I was Greek. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fiend for olives. It's, uh, Call me it's Ron Papadopoulos. That's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here, man. That's uh... <laughs> So, oh, I... Promised uh, all the listeners uh, that I would talk about the future of TFP Films and what we've got coming up soon. Well, then, goddamn it, talk about it. Don't, don't. We don't stop. We just don't stop. We're like a locomotive. And I'm telling. Well, because when I turned fifty, I was like, "Oh, we got to hurry up." I don't know how long I have because I'm a hypochondriac. So I'm like, "I'm gonna die if we don't make all the movies now." Can't slow this engine down. So, <coughs> God. That's just so a in October, Look at metal breath. we shot a little film called The Hallow House or Hallow House. That sounds like a horror movie. And it's not, is the thing. It's a lovely, it's Halloween. It's, oh. a, it's a love letter to Halloween. So I wanted to, uh, 
you know, there's a movie called The Lady in White. It came out when I was a child and you were a young man. And uh, it, it's very bucolic and, and, and lovely and nostalgic feeling. And I wanted that for the first half. And then I wanted to do Evil Dead 2 for the second half. So there are elements of horror in it, but it's never dangerous. It's always playful. Oh, and that yeah, should be okay. coming out this year, too. Awesome. And the next thing we're filming is a series of mini-sodes, 10-minute mini-sodes, uh, that follow the characters of Hallow House. We have seven more to film now. Oh, fantastic. A good right. series. It's just fun. After the after the heaviness and pretentiousness of Chow Bella <laughs> and, it is, and how it, and the, and the words in the words of the family guy, it insists upon itself. Exactly. Well, it when I wrote Chow Bella, I, upon I was, itself. Actually, I, was no, I thought Chow Bella was a lovely film. I mean, absolutely it, it was done in color, it was done in black and white. It was yeah. done. The color schemes were, were were fantastic in it. The music was fantastic in it, even though you can't use it because it's not public domain. But even though we stole it, the, yeah, I, I liked uh, 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 "Dance of the Mountain King" when uh, when the other guy came up to the door. <laughs> All the mountain king. What I love about Chow Bella, not to toot my own horn, but I'm toot, gonna toot, motherfucker, toot. Yeah. Uh, what I love about Chow Bella is there is only one scene that is not kind of a heightened reality. And I'm in it. I'm yes. in that scene. Yes, you and were the, fantastic. The whole, you the did whole a great job. Scene, your, your narrative was fantastic. Thank it was, you. It was, it was almost tear jerking. The Very funny close. thing about that is that I wrote the script and then when I went to do the monologue, I said, oh, this is shitty. I'm rewriting this because I can. <laughs> and I did. Uh, you did that. You did that as only like a real dad can do that. Like, you know, like, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, like as only a real father can, you know, I was, when it came down to it, I was like, well, fuck, I'm the guy in charge for the most part. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to make it good. Fucking, there's a right here in my ear. There is a, the Joker's uh, tie and it makes like my ear look like it's, uh, like an elf ear, yeah, like uh, three inches taller, yeah. And, yeah. Which I don't, I don't need because I've already got these elf fucking ears anyway. So. <laughs> Jugs, we used to call it the jug handles. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they used to call them. Look uh, at those. That's uh, uh, it's how uh, how my wife holds her liquor. Is uh, that's uh, right in the jugs. Yeah. Oh, 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 there it is. There oh, it is. is. K. Hey. No, so um. I was with a different film group when I wrote Chow Bella, and then um, don't touch him there. Not there. Don't, no. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what you don't know is that Jack feels it every time he touches a cardboard <laughs> effigy. Yeah, Jack feels it. <laughs> right. So um, I was with a different film group, and I said, and my photographer at the time, he was like, when we edit the dialogue, there's so much dialogue. And I was like, okay, I understand. And then I said, I'm going to write the most pretentious movie I can and try to write little dialogue, no dialogue. Right. Well, no dialogue did not work. Right. Uh, but what I came out with was Chow Bella, where there's a bunch of small lines, one big monologue. Most of it is just photography. It is. It is like it's very cinematic. It's it. It has very little to do with dialogue. It's all said without dialogue. Right. Like it is, it, it's, uh, it, it's inferred. It's all inferred, you know? Well, that's, I always, that's why, I, that's why I, I think that's why I liked it so much. Well, number one, the score, I like the score and then right. how it danced with what would, would be inferred as to what the conversation was without actually having one. Yeah. That was God, I so right fucking there. smart there. Ah, uh, we're clever every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> we do it right every once in a while. So when City I heard fuckers, it, I'm not a complete idiot. I said, no, you, you brought up uh, Ravel. Not that totally. was impressive. <laughs> really? I was like, yeah, the Did guy. Hall, I had Hall of the Mountain King by Ravel Eduard Grigg. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, when I wrote it, I said, I'm going to write the most pretentious thing ever. Look who knows classical music. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I've only seen a few of those movies that we rip off in Chow Bella. 
Mm-hmm. I have not seen all of Fellini's movies. I've only I don't seen know if few. I've ever seen a Fellini film. Well, uh, the yeah. thing was, we, we're telling the story through the eyes of a, a kind of a pretentious person. Yeah. And the way an, a young American girl would perceive those films, not how, you know, a literate film student would uh, perceive those films. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was um, like uh, that, that teenage angst and that dreamer yeah. mentality, that, that dreamer mentality, you know, like and the fantasy of the way she wanted it to work out, you know, like standing by the fountain and the music playing and she's like, come on! You know, like, I love that. That's one of my favorite parts of La Dolce Vita is the Marcello, Marcello. Marcello. And we got, I was looking for a fountain. You won't believe how goddamn hard it is to find a fountain where somebody can, uh, you know, sign off on your being there. Yeah. Oh, 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 the sign is off on you being there. The, yeah, the release form where they go, okay, that's fine. Because Louisville City Parks will charge you like 1200 bucks to even think about doing Just their stuff. Just in front of a fucking fountain? I was like, I'm making this for $50. Yeah, so somebody knew of the, they fucking paid you for it. Yeah, somebody knew of the St. John Fountain in the St. John neighborhood of Louisville. We checked it out. It was perfect. It was beautiful. How much do you think I'm going to make off of a short film? I, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it, literally $50 to $100 was the budget for the entirety of Chow Bella. I cannot afford the parks system. If they were smart enough, they would have just done a contract where they got like fucking a quarter off of every... Up yeah, every view. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that would have been great. Been I, would have been, that. I would have totally been willing, but they want to charge you a ridiculous amount. And so I went outside of that, uh, the uh, Neighborhood Association at St. John, uh, the St. John neighborhood were very nice and very, they're just lovely people. And it was a great place to shoot. And yeah. you can, you saw how beautiful the place is. Oh, yeah, it was gorgeous. Yeah. So it's it really like, gets uh, into that dreamer. Hey, everybody, we're flying off to Hearst Castle. <laughs> yeah. It was love. Oh, I couldn't believe it. We were so fortunate with that. Actually, uh, speaking of fortunate and locations, I have to mention the location of the film Truth, which okay. is almost entirely inside of a, a supposed real haunted house. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't want... <laughs> Uh, I don't want to change that. I don't want any evidence of ghosts to appear. <laughs> I don't want any evidence of ghosts. Like, right. Because I'm basically you a coward. Like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Well, the, that's a fucking ghost. That's yeah. I can ghost. see it. There was, the funny thing was, I did. Um, I Boo! Did, there he I, is. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had always been obsessed with that location from when I was a kid. It was that everybody talked about it. There was news articles that are like, is it haunted? Is it not? And when I was a kid, I was like, oh, it's spooky. It's great. It's crazy. Fast forward, you know, 30 years, 40 years. And uh, the organization that I do theater with, we did a production of The Haunting of Hill House in that house. Right. Now, I had written the script to Truth not based on that location. When I did the play, I told my partner, Andrew, I said, we have to, I have to rewrite this. I have to rewrite it around that location. I said, don't worry, I'm not going to change the whole thing. I'm just going to tinker with it a little bit and fit it around that. The second draft maintained six lines of dialogue and the concept, and that was There's it. No, I knew it. There's no fucking way you're going to no. rewrite write that and try to get like, you, you can't stop your mind. If no. you're a writer, you can't stop your mind, you know? No. All the potential I found in that location made its way into this totally different second draft that was far superior to the first draft. And <laughs> Well, of course you think it is. You wrote it. Yeah, well, I think it's That's consensus. Right. They're like, hey, you wrote that. How is it? Oh, God, awful. That was just, yeah. that was just the fucking worst. The first I can't even one. believe I put pen to paper. You know, like, even when we had the first read through with the actors, I went. Somebody ought to beat me up for what I just wrote. That's I what said, I we're think. Not, <laughs> we're not filming the dog shit script in front of you, but this will give you the idea. Like I hated that first draft, but the idea was there, and I wanted to do this idea. But you can work with it, you know. Like 
But yeah. still, it's it's not going to have the original comp uh, thing that your your the the original script had from House on Haunted Hill or the, yeah, it, uh, it was the it was the concept. It, the concept remained essentially all the dialogue. Right. Like the story just took me to a whole different place, uh, and it's beautiful. I love it. So that located the first day. I said, okay, uh, everybody's off doing stuff. People had to leave, and I was the only one in this uh, decrepit mansion, supposedly haunted for years. And I was like, I don't believe in ghosts, so leave me here alone. Right. That's fine. Okay. Now, when I was left there alone, I was in the basement area, and I thought, this isn't so bad. It's nice. It's quiet. I can do my work. And I was uh, doing set design with this little toy box. Now, in this little toy box... I had wanted a sock monkey, and we found one that when you press on its thumb or whatever, it does this crazy little laugh. Yeah. It goes peekaboo, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. It does it three times. I didn't know it did it three times. Four <laughs> times it does it. So I'm sitting in the basement by myself. And I'm looking at that monkey's paw going, should I push it? Oh, yeah. and it felt like being in a, like uh, going to a haunted house, you know, right. like JC's, you're going, oh, should I push the paw? And I pushed that paw and it went peekaboo. <laughs> and I went, oh, ha, ha, that's kind of creepy. Yeah, that's what I got. And then, it, about, did it, uh, like then a, it did it a second time. And I was like, like the hyena on, uh, on Lion King. Move yeah. Faster. That was exactly it. Then it does it a third time, and I went, what the fuck is that? I was like, no, it does it once. It only does it once. So every experience I had in that house was brought on by imagination. Every bit of it. It was great. Yes. And that's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I can see where you get freaked out about that. I can see where oh, yeah. that scared the shit out of you. I wanted to test myself. And we only had one night shoot there, so... uh I didn't get to test myself at night, nor did I want to. So it all worked out. Hey, Peg, thanks for tuning in. We're talking to Ron Blair. He is an actor. He's a director. He's a writer. Uh, he has a uh, he has a film out right now. You can still see that. Did you say that's on? Uh, it's definitely on Mosaic TV by going to Mosaic TV on any Roku device. Um, by Only any on Amazon Fire Stick or any Android device, you can go to Mosaic TV. And in fact, if you go to Watch mosaictv.com right now. You get a free uh, 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 viewing right now, and you can see the movie Truth. Truth. The movie Truth is on there. Uh, and I believe it's, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yep, that's where it is. It's lovely. It's Mosaic lovely. TV. It's only on Mosaic TV. And I did see this movie that's not released yet. It's called uh, Ciao Bella, and it was fantastic. Just Thank fantastic. you, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it was great. It was. Uh, he had a great. I, I truly, I truly enjoyed that 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 whole ride. The whole the whole feel of it. The whole, like I said, I liked I liked that that was in black and white in some places, and color in some places, enhancing the the emotion of it. And and again, the, the classical music score to it, uh, which I love. Um, but yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had always been a fan of classical. You music. just missed the discussion about the fountain peg. I'm really disappointed in that. So, What's that? I was telling uh, a friend of mine's watching. I said, I, you missed the fountain discussion. What? <laughs> what? Why? It, God we damn it, Peg. Out there. We were going to be on here at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. 6 Central. Yeah. Well, she said well, she's in. Let's see. Can't, I, I, oh, I can't spell that. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one you can watch is Truth, not Chow Bella. So. Truth is the one you want to watch on Mosaic TV and could... It's an apostrophe. It's an apostrophe. Not an apostrophe. I went to school. It's an asterisk. An asterisk. asterisk could. Could. It'll make, an asterisk. It'll make sense when you see That's it. That's on YouTube. And that one's on YouTube. It's lovely. It's eight minutes long. Uh, everybody has eight minutes in their day to go watch yeah. it. We no, have to fool you. He's very talented. Who's that? Am I? <laughs> I am, aren't I? I tell people they don't believe me. They don't believe me. I'm quite talented. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying uh, having you on, Ron. I really Thanks, am. man. You're welcome. I'm enjoying being here. It's a hoot. <laughs> and Annie. It's I love hoot. having a hoot and Annie and a hoedown. 
in a shindig. In a shindig. <sighs> and a clam bake. I've never I been to like a clam bake. I feel I like playing like a banjo at this point. And a, but a bing, 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 bing. Have you, you know, at one point I thought I should I should learn to play an instrument. I Nobody like to should. sing. I've sang on stage. I can't play an instrument for fuck. I picked up a guitar once. I was like, I'm going to learn to play the guitar. And after about three minutes of pressing on those steel wires, I went, yeah. I I'm not going to do shit. I don't know what it was that I was watching the other day. It was it was Bigfoot. It was Sasquatch. It goes up to a campground, that, a, a campsite that's just demolished or whatever. Yeah. And he sees a guitar. And he sits down. And he just starts fucking playing it beautifully. Like, <laughs> like classic Spanish guitar. And at the end he goes, ow! And he gets up just fucking smashes it. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What? Does it hurt? It's the most painful instrument to play. It's insane. <laughs> but he's like, da -da -ding, ding, ding, da -ding, ding, 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 like very, very that Spanish, fucking very yeah. hard to do acoustic. And he's like, ow! Oh yeah! Ah! Just fucking! I can't remember what that was on, but God, it was fucking hilarious. Like, uh, Bigfoot knows. Bigfoot funny. knows what's up. Yeah, he yeah, he, Sasquatch knows what's up. He makes a good soap. I, he I, he I, does I, make it fine. I, I, I do use all of his. All of his uh, man uh, keeping equipment. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I do want to give a shout out. One of if my you uh, smell my... my arm right now. You that that's that's squatch lotion. Oh, we've had squatch. Yeah. I will stand by the smell of squatch. So, yes, all day long. I love it. My wife would... got me. My wife got me the entire uh, Harry Potter collection of soaps. So right now, uh, the bar soap I'm using right now is the Hufflepuff. So Lovely. I'm using the Hufflepuff uh, bar of soap. It I, smells I'm not sure milk I'm gonna toast. Go, I'm probably going to go humble. I'm probably going to go Slytherin next, or, or maybe Gryffindor. You know, I'm not sure. Go Slytherin. It'll be like Irish Spring if Irish Spring put some fucking effort into something. <laughs> That's what it'll be. Uh, I think. No, I love well, it. I, I love I'm, that I'm there's Harry Potter. I'm Ravenclaw, so I'm saving Ravenclaw for the end, for the last one. That's going to be my last. Uh, I expect that one to smell woodsy. Uh, nice actually, woodsy. Uh, what's the name of the, uh, uh, what's what's the name of God damn it, Lather of Pride or something? Lather of Pride, or Lather and something. Yeah, that's what I wish. If I were an exotic dancer, Lather of Pride would be my name, or or, or it would be or, spicy Korean barbecue. If I were an exotic dancer, spicy Korean barbecue. That, that would be your exotic dance. Welcome to the center stage. Spicy Kore Korean barbecue. Spicy Korean barbecue. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I, did go to, uh, I did go to a strip right. joint where uh, this lovely uh, uh, black girl came out. And she was just beautiful. Uh, but she came out to uh, the Game of Thrones uh, theme. And she was like... <laughs> <laughs> Magnificent. Beauty. I do want to give a shout out to my producer. Sure. Uh, Angel Solomon Greer. Who, Angel uh, Solomon Greer. She Not should be watching Solomon right Greer. now. She might be. Might she be. said she was. Mm. Born on a Tuesday. Died on a Saturday. That's right. She uh, she actually stars in Truth. She is the star Oh. Of truth among an ensemble cast, and she produced uh, Chow Bella, she produced Could, she produced Hallow House, and was in it. And if you've never produced and acted, it's a fucking trick. Yeah. Oh, you got to be on top of your shit, you know. Yeah, I've I, I've never done any of that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've done some writing and like some uh, comic sketches and stuff like that for for some people uh, for for a little show in Akron called If It's Comedy. I did yeah. uh, I did some writing for that one, but. I, I've Did not you never done any producing or anything. I just, I just do. I'm an idea guy, you know. Like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, I get that. When I first started writing and socializing, I don't socialize much anymore, probably because of stories like this, or because people are awful. Well, because I would have people come right, up to me and they're like, they're like, I had an idea. Do you want to write the script? And I was like, Fuck no! You write the script. I'm writing my. <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? No, no. Yeah. I'm a bad collaborator. <laughs> that same I producer. I went through. I went through two co-hosts. Uh, yes. That same producer was like, 
do you want to collaborate on a writing project? And I said, I value our friendship. And that's where we left it. Is that right? I'm Everybody, not good at well, collaborating. I, just, I don't collaborate because a lot of times, like a lot of podcasts I'm not really in tune with because they're not good. Right. Um, so, uh, but, but like, so when Tori reached out to me about this mosaic thing, she didn't really say it was about, she goes, Hey, I got an idea about a collaboration. I'm like, oh. right. Yeah, and oh. I, well, first I didn't, first I thought, cause I didn't remember her right off the bat. Cause usually if somebody reaches out to you, it's <laughs> either like, it's either like somebody wants money from you. Right. You know, or, or they want you to help boost their whatever, you know, right. like, they want, oh, they want yeah. something. I, I don't work good with others. And then she's like, do you want to be on a TV channel? And I'm like, yep. Yeah. I <laughs> yes, I do. You. I do want to be on a TV channel. But I was like really skeptical at first. I like, I even reached out to her. I'm like, so what episode was you on? You know? And usually if somebody's like a scam that they don't get back to you like right away. They're like, oh, fuck, right. I got to find something. Oh, fuck, I got to find something. Oh, fuck, I got to find something. You know, and then she's like, uh, she's like, oh, I was on uh, with this one girl. I go, oh, yeah, you guys had the murder mystery thing. She's like, yes. And I'm like, it's not a scam. OK, let's talk. You know, like I love that because I am I, if a stranger hits me up, boy, I am oh. cynical. I've, I've had for a long time every, every week. Every week I've got somebody that's what you want podcast promotion or, right? or not even promotion. It's, you want podcast promote? No, I don't want podcast promote. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I love what you do you're, because it's not like you're gonna romance me. Use all the fucking words. God it's, damn it! It's not so uptight that you're like. And let me ask you about Chow Bella. Now in Chow Bella, you show your ass a little bit. And I'm like, I sure did. I sure, I sure did. did. I sure did. God. I absolutely yeah, would. I hate huh? Ken. I hate Ken so fucking much. I hate Ken. If you're not funny, don't fucking do it. If you can't rely on you, don't, do don't it. fucking do it. I did. I dallied with stand-up comedy once. And after one of my sets, this dude that I had known for a long time, he comes up to me after the show and he's like, I should try stand-up comedy too. And I'm like, fuck you. You can't do it. How, <laughs> dare, how fucking dare you? And he wasn't funny. He's like, I'm funny. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go home now. I'm going to go All to right, Denny's buddy. and then go home. You're funny. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things. I'm telling <laughs> you. Ah, ah. Oh, you're funny. Here you go. There, there you go. There you go. It's the same thing with, you, I have an idea. You have the floor, sir. Right. Knock your fucking self out. No, tell a joke. Write a, yeah. write a bit. Get up there. <laughs> I, you know, I you might as well stick a dick in your face, dude. You're oh, not. <laughs> whether it's on, you know, whether it's performing in a play or, or doing a movie or anything like that, there's a point where you go, where somebody goes, oh, if you can do that, I can do that. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. This is not a chorus line, sir. This is not a chorus line. No, no. I'm a Cassie. One. When it, oh, listen, when it comes to a I chorus line, that. I'm a Cassie, okay? I don't belong in your little ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> Good to talk to another theater dude, too. So, uh, yeah. Oh, isn't it, right. isn't it lovely? So it, it is. Isn't it lovely? So, all right. Uh, we are coming up on 45 minutes. I try to keep it right there uh, all the time. Uh, because what? I am on a Mosaic TV, I try to keep it an hour so that it can have commercials. We're I done, honey. Ah, no. So, um, no. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm giving it to the corporate fucking greed. That is. Anyway, okay. John, okay. Blair, Ron, Blair, tell us everything about you, where we can find you, what your production company is, what your movies are. And if we can give you some fucking money, tell us where you are, brother. Go. You got it. Uh, you can check out Chow Bella soon in the future once the same guy that did the music for Truth does the music for Chow Bella. You're not with the same music. Here. Same music. We just don't have to pay for performance rights. Yay, we Yay. did again. Uh, you can check out Truth right here on Mosaic TV and only on Mosaic TV. Check it out. A lot of people put all of their blood and sweat and urine into it. I Trust me. And <laughs> listen, there was no indoor plumbing at our location. When you pour urine into something, you know you care. 
We had a pee place. We all had a pee place. It was lovely. I've done that to people for them. Oh, yeah. I know. I gave them uh, plenty of advance warning, though. I was like, pee before you get here. Um, you can also check out Could, a beautiful, beautiful eight-minute film. Uh, most people have written back saying, I cried. I cried. I'm like, yes. Yes. Uh, it is a tear jerker. It is absolutely a tear jerker. I've seen it many times. And even I go, okay, I'm tearing up a little bit. It's lovely. Uh, look for Hollow House coming out soon. You can hit us up at the TFP film page on Facebook. Check us out there and get information about what we're doing, what's coming up. And uh, and I don't know, you might see me sometimes. I am very sexy for a large man. And you do want to check this out, believe me. Uh, so uh, that's what we have available to, right now. I, I like you a lot. I'm not opposed to becoming a bear with you. Uh, so oh. uh, that's, that's and that's a compliment because I I don't say that to every fella. You know, I mean, it's uh, that's a compliment to have because my wife don't let me. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> I don't understand why you have two hands on my shoulders when you're checking my prostate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love that bat. I so, yeah, you shouldn't, uh, just don't ask questions you don't want answers to. Exactly. Um, exactly. Now, if you want to send us money, we did have a GoFundMe page set up at one point. I don't know if it's still up there. Uh, we were doing that for truth. We we didn't meet our goal, uh, but we still made the movie because fuck you. I'm going to make my movie no matter what. Right. And so uh, I don't know if that's still available, but if you want to give us a donation or say, hey, I love what you do. Even even if you just want to compliment us and say, I love truth or I love could, I thought it was great. Write to us at Facebook on our TFP Films page and we'll work out a way for you to give us money. Trust me, for we'll God's sake, out. we need it. Somehow, there we is Venmo. It. There Absolutely. is Apple Pay. I fucking promise you. We will figure out a way for you to give TFP Films some money, I assure you. And as Trust always, me. you can give me a little bit of love at my worst holiday at patreon.com. Absolutely. You can see it on Mosaic TV, baby. Right Only now, go Mosaic to uh, watchmosaictv.com, uh, uh, and you can you can uh, get on for free right now. Uh, so go to there. Uh, uh, definitely, it's on a Roku. You can go to Roku. Uh, uh, you can go to it on Roku. You can go to it on Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, if you have an, a, 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 a Android device, got yes. it. I can't even talk. Maybe I should. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Keep drinking. I'm going to drink some more. So anyway, you can find us for that. And hang out for a little bit after we're done here. I'm going to sign off. You hang out from a room next to my bathroom in my basement. This has been my worst holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>